Hello everyone, welcome to Game Junk Prototype episode 53, recording on Thursday, March 18th, 2021. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And some incoming late news today, we'll be talking about the Square Enix Presents Spring 2021 video showcase that happened today, going over, you know, the major stuff in there, maybe skipping over some things. And we'll talk about the newly unveiled PSVR 2 controllers. Unveiled? Is that a word? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> What's the word? Unveiled. Unve I say veiled. <laughs> <laughs> I feel fine with that. <laughs> okay. I feel people have said unveiled before. Well, you, you have. Know. I have now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hello to our many, many new uh, subscribers on YouTube. Got a little traction on that last episode. Yeah. People are not liking... Uh, first of all, I didn't even trash Xbox. I just said that press conference was a stroke fest, and I stand by whatever <laughs> I said. Yeah, it, it has been our most viewed video, and uh, I think there was just some Bethesda people that just wanted to come in and hate no matter what we said, because I rewatched some of it, and I didn't see us trashing really anything about it other than saying that they didn't announce anything new and they were just kind of propping each other's up and that was it i don't know what people got exactly angry. a stroke fest yeah, and yeah. uh <laughs> yeah i think people thought we were saying that the actual bethesda deal wasn't a big deal but it was more just that that particular um round table wasn't that yeah the deal. acquisition was huge when i heard about it initially this i was just well i think we were all saying the it was like this weird refresher since nothing has really happened as a result. And if anything, it made things more obscure uh, in terms of exclusivity or where this is going. So uh, stand by everything I said in there. Uh, sorry <laughs> if you didn't like it. I am fully in favor of Microsoft acquiring Bethesda. I love exclusivity. I think it's good for the console wars. I'm down and... Uh, yeah, just a pointless press conference that I spent an hour and a half watching for no reason to learn nothing. And if you're watching now, why not subscribe? Why not hit the like button? Yeah, why not like, leave a comment? Give a thumbs up on this video for all the haters that are bringing it down. <laughs> Smash that shit. <laughs> Please, if you're listening, go like this or something. It's hurting my feelings. <laughs> Whatever the kids do these days on the <laughs> YouTubes. It's starting to get yeah. to me. Well, speaking of uh, videos or video presentations, we're going to get into Square Enix Presents Spring 2021. And it's a bit shorter, although I think we both experienced re-watching this on YouTube, just an insane amount of ads, like every five seconds. And it was ads for the thing I just watched <laughs> intermixed. Like most of my ads were the PlayStation five upgrade of Avengers and other stuff like that. So it was, and the points where the ads came in were really strange. So whatever I'm over the ads, I'm over it. Uh, but it's just weird when you watch it on like the official square Enix channel, you expect there to be no ads. Like maybe if somebody else is re putting it up on their channel, they would put ads, but I mean, there was a lot of ads, a lot of ads. So let's get into the first major announcement. And I'd heard about this game only semi-recently because there was a, a demo, downloadable demo quite recently. And that is uh, Outriders, which is basically, if I was to describe it, Destiny meets uh, The Division meets Gears of War. And I think it's developed by people who worked on Gears of War at some point under Epic. I can't remember the name of the studio. People can fly. People can fly, okay? And I have to say, I know very little about this game, but from what I saw today, I am intrigued by this game. I think uh, it looks like it's using some tried and true mechanics from Gears and War, from Gears and War, Gears of War. And I think the, uh, like the camera perspective is interesting to me. It's like a little closer than The Division clearly has destiny menus and I'm feeling a ton of destiny influence. I guess it's an attempt to create an interesting world. Like I don't find the divisions world all that interesting destiny. It feels like I'm 
so far behind in what's going on in that game. Like it's a terrible point to even try to catch up. But starting from starting from scratch in a fresh new IP like that like this is kind of intriguing, and I like the names of the classes. Uh, what was the one? Techno Ranger or something? <laughs> Technomancer. Technomancer, and I think that's been used in some other games before too. But yeah, it's a good name. I, I mean, I thought it looked kind of cool. I I really was not aware of the Gears of War influence on this game until today, and I like it. Like the run where you kind of charge was pretty much lifted straight out of gears of war the cover mechanics look really similar and i think gears of war has great foundational mechanics so uh i'm intrigued not gonna lie i think i said intrigued four times already i'm sorry (laughs) yeah i mean i'm i guess like for me the i think the difference between this and like destiny and those kind of games is it's not like a games as a service game right like it's it's just the campaign that you can play through co-op, if I'm not mistaken. Is that not true? I, I think so. Yeah, I think Really? So. I thought it was games as a service for sure. Yeah, I, they seem to be like marketing it that way, but I don't think it is. But I They're mean, definitely not... doing their best to make it look like Destiny in like yeah. all oh, yeah. the publicity. But I like I like I I prefer that personally. Like not that I you know I've dabbled in Destiny and I kind of liked it, but um, <clears throat> to me there's more potential there for you know a solid um, campaign and and story experience if it's if it's just sort of like that's their focus. And I like co-op games or games that have co-op available. So hmm. I'm down. And it's on Game Pass, right? Did you mention that? Oh, I didn't know that. I don't yeah. even have to buy it. Yeah. I'm in. Is I'm that in. official? April 1st. I thought that was a rumor. It was a rumor, but I'm pretty sure they made it official. Let me just... Yes, on March 15th, 2021, it was announced that the Xbox version would be available at no additional cost to Xbox, Xbox Game Pass subscribers. I can't talk tonight. Yeah, apparently seems, not. Seems weird that they didn't mention that in the press conference, but maybe it's not that They weird. want people to pre-order still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy that full full game. Yeah, apparently this was originally announced or mentioned as a project in 2018. It was not on my radar whatsoever. So a few of the podcasts I listened to have been very down on this game, saying the demo is not very good. Did you did either of you guys try the demo? No. No. So I don't know. Like, it looked kind of interesting. Like, I agree with you guys, but uh, the vibes are not good around this game. So, and it seems to be having a pretty big marketing push. I'm starting to see a lot of ads for it around. Uh, this was sort of the first one where I got, I saw more of an in-depth look of what the game actually is, but there does seem to be a lot of like banner ads on websites, a lot of YouTube ads kind of going on. So obviously Square Enix is putting a lot of marketing money behind it. So they must believe in it at least a little bit, or maybe they're hoping, I don't know, maybe this is kind of tied up with, a similar mistake they made with Avengers where they kind of thought it was better than it is. And they're putting money behind it to try to, or maybe they know it's not good and they're putting a lot of money (laughs) behind it uh, to try to get people to buy it anyway. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of a strange situation right now. I mean, it just based on the trailers and stuff, uh, it's got the potential to be a big game. I mean, it may not actually be good, but I think it has the makings of, sort of a big blockbuster game so kind of makes sense they would put money behind it well let's even though it wasn't next in the uh video let's use it as a segue to talk about the avengers uh next gen upgrade that's coming in and they showed quite a bit of footage from that including some extra campaigns and i think well two extra i don't know if one's a campaign or just kind of a new mission with the like hulk that looked kind of interesting i don't know if that's a comic thing but i thought it looked cool and some hawkeye stuff going on there where they showed some extended gameplay which i thought looked pretty good i mean i'm not into this game i haven't tried it yet but the the gameplay looked interesting and fun i'm definitely more intrigued by what i saw today and a new expansion for black panther right so i don't know i i looked to see if it was on sale i was gonna buy it today if it was on sale, it's still full price, which is not surprising because they announced new stuff today. But I have a feeling I might uh, actually pick it up at some point. Sean, you've played this a bit, right? Yeah, 
yeah, I played it a bit. I liked what I played of it. I, I think, you know, most of the complaints I've seen out there are kind of once you hit the end of the campaign, there's not as much stuff to do. And, you know, they've been slow to roll out DLC, but I mean, the Hawkeye thing looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm kind of interested in checking that out. Um, I, you know, it just reminded me, like I hadn't played it in a while and Kieran hadn't played it in a while. And so I just went and downloaded the PS5 upgrades. So that'll be an excuse to probably at least check that out. Now I'm not sure, the, like, I believe the Hawkeye DLC is free if you bought the game. I'm not sure about the Black Panther. I, no, I thought I, I, the way they said it, it's, I think they said expansion. Like, I think it's, it's extra cash. Yeah, I would assume it is, but I, for some reason, I thought I had read that a lot of the DLC stuff was going to be free for it. So I'm not. Totally it, the way they sure. teased it definitely implied like this is going to be big. It's going to cost money. Uh, at least that's the vibe I got. Well, but I, some sort of I, battle pass thing it says. So you're definitely paying for something here. <laughs> yeah, I found that I thought the Hawkeye stuff looked a little repetitive myself. Like it seemed like they were doing kind of the same three moves kind of over and over again. They showed you a bunch of different areas, but it was still the same mechanics. So it was too bad. They didn't show any kind of progression, but I mean, a lot of these hack and slash games are like that. So I don't know if I really should have expected anything more, but it did go on for quite a long time for not showing much variety and like the attacks and moves, but maybe I just wasn't watching closely enough. But yeah. If I had I, one complaint, there was no HUD or other elements going on. So Often, like we talk about in some of these demos, I still didn't get the sense of how I aim some of those moves. It looked kind of on autopilot, especially for a character that's using projectiles. Mm -hmm. So it, it left a few questions more than it answered for me. But uh, yeah, a lot of the moves looked really quick. So I imagine there's some sort of like lock on system where it just auto, auto targets. Like I can't imagine being able to manually target that as fast as they were in a lot of cases. So <laughs> I'm sure there's an auto lock on thing. Yeah. You're not wrong though. The combat does get a bit repetitive. Um, and that's where like, for me playing the campaign, the story was actually kind of interesting. Um, and that was kind of enough to offset it. But I think, I don't know. Well, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm assuming gonna... based on what I've seen, the offset for that is you switch characters very often to break up the repetition or do you play the whole campaign as one character? Uh, there's, yeah, different characters for different missions. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you can, I I'm, would guess that after you beat it, you could go back and play with different missions with different characters, but I don't know for sure. Now, I also thought that the movement looked quite slow. Is it, are all the characters kind of sluggish? Like, I mean, Hawkeye was obviously like jumping around and shooting his arrows pretty quickly, but like every move where he kind of did a slam or something it sort of seemed like walking afterwards or just walking around the environment or was a little sluggish a little slow are all the characters kind of like that or i i don't know i think when i think of hawkeye i think of him a little more nimble and even just in a generic like superhero game you'd think you'd want the character movement speed to be a little more exaggerated so that it's a little uh more enjoyable to get around the world but i don't know yeah i i it's been a little while since I played. I do remember like different characters or have sort of different speeds. And I remember, I feel like Iron Man was like super slow and bulky, which hmm. I guess maybe makes sense. But uh, yeah, it, it varies from character to character. So, hmm. Okay. Another announcement was uh, celebrating Tomb Raider's 25th anniversary with some huge stuff going on there, a cookbook coming out shortly, uh, anime <laughs> series, some other trash. The cookbook, it was like, we are very pleased to announce a Tomb Raider cookbook. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> to be fair, I feel like the Mario uh, 35th anniversary had a lot of the same stuff, like the Puma deals and yeah, just toys. So, you know, let's get a, a shot in at Nintendo while we're here. <laughs> 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 but I guess the big announcement was a new trilogy packaging of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider games. I, w I really would have been excited if there was a PS5 version or an upscaled or improved version of these games. It seems like it's not. It's basically just a store packaging, which is becoming kind of annoying. EA packages and Ubisoft are just packaging two games up and 
putting new skews of Madden up and calling it different names. And it's really bloating. They always end up in the what's new section and it's really getting annoying. It's got to stop. Yeah. I was a little confused too. Like I still haven't played rise or shadow and you know, great games. You're missing out, dude. Well, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to love them cause I, I love the first one, but I, uh, I mean, this would have been something that maybe would have pushed me to play them. Uh, but it's weird because it's like the it's uh what, what's the official name of it it's something definitive trilogy or something which makes you think you're getting upgraded versions but i think it's just that you get all the dlc or something right i think so but it's definitive dude <laughs> it's true now does not i thought shadow of the tomb raider had a ps5 no upgrade no no, it is the game that every benchmarking video uses. I don't know if there's, they have like some deal where people get it for free to show graphical prowess or, uh, you know, benchmark games. I think even Apple used it in their M1 stuff. Uh, I don't know why that game is used for every demo, but I don't know if it's working. I don't know if the sales are changing as a result. <laughs> But uh, it is a great game. I love that trilogy. One of the most underrated game series out there. Yeah, and I guess just, you know, if you don't own these games yet, that trilogy is heavily discounted right now. I think it's like 60% off or something. So you can get all three games for 20 or $30. I'm not exactly sure how much it was, but it's a good deal. They're excellent. Excellent games. And uh, Laura or Lara Croft is currently in Fortnite, I think. And they had another Croft Manor Fortnite expansion. Needle, oh, sorry. Needle is not moving. at all. <laughs> Next, they got into some mobile stuff that I'm going to go very quickly over like uh, just cause mobile. It's a, that's a franchise I've never been intrigued by. It seems like it's a CGI trailer with very, uh, subpar gameplay don't know for sure but that's the vibe i got a marketing uh thing hitman sniper assassins which was just teased and a space invaders ar game uh i have nothing to say about any of these i don't know if you guys do no, not really i mean just cause i've i've wanted to play the, the console versions it seems like a weird choice for a mobile game but I don't even like, is it a battle Royale thing? It seemed kind at of one like point. It seemed like it was almost a top down strategy game or something like that. I I'll be honest, based on what I saw, I have no idea what type of game it is, nor do I care. <laughs> Anyone okay. disagree with that statement? <laughs> no, not really for the, from their own personal perspective, not mine. No, that, that it sounds like it was a skip session right there for uh, huck city. <laughs> Uh, I went through very quickly. Yes. <laughs> I tried to skip ahead on a few things and I was still getting hit with ads. I was oh, like, yeah. what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Next was a bit of a Taito section, which had a, what's the series that has shooting the balls? A bubble bobble. But didn't it have a bubble bobble game? Bust yes, a did move. Bust a move is the series. Oh, bust right? a move. I think it's the same. I think. The well, it's the same characters, but one is Bubble Bobble and one is Bust a Move is a like oh, okay. actual shooting game where you aim stuff. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but the game I they showed know. here was Bubble Bobble, right? A version, well, there was two. They showed uh, Tao Hao Bubble Spell, which is a like a bust a, move, bust a Move version or <laughs> of the... <laughs> Tao Hao version of Bust a Move. I've never played it. The Tao Hao series. Apparently, it's like a bullet hell type of uh, shooter. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, I've started to hear about it a bit more. And then, in the line of shooters, was uh, Darius uh, Cosmic Revelation, a two D shooter, which I feel like it's a genre that's died out. But I was semi intrigued by this. Definitely not, uh, you know, pre ordering or anything, but. I kind of miss a good 2D shooter. The last one I can think of was Sin Mora. And that's about it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the the Bubble Bobble one, I was a little interested in. I guess it's already been out for a while. It's just that it's coming to Steam now or something. But it's I was Bubble thinking, Bo is Bubble Bobble any good? Like, I've, 
I played it at some point on NES when I was young. It it seems like a game that would not hold up at all. Like that and Dig Dug, while popular at the time, the gameplay seems extremely strange and not that much fun when you see videos for it. I think it's fun as a multiplayer game, and that's what this is. Bubble Bubble for friends. So uh kind of makes sense. I don't know. It's kind of yeah. like uh it's kind of like a different take on Arkanoid or whatever you call those brick breaker games and then it's and then you could say the next game is maybe like zuma whatever, that's like, plus the move not bubble sean's talking about bubble bobble oh okay i don't know what the difference is between <laughs> you know. bubble bobble you like shoot bubbles and trap it's characters kind of, in them and then you can jump on the bubbles you shoot it, like kind it's, of like the original mario brothers like there's levels that you have to get through and you trap the enemies in the bubbles and then oh you i have the never level. played that then i have no idea what that is it's pretty good Clearly, there's some potential branding issues with Bubble Bobble and Bust the Moon. <laughs> so, yeah. so, universe. so now you're talking about the Bubble Bobble for Friends game that was announced, right? Yeah. Yeah, that looked like literally they just took every Mario game that's ever been made, Super Smash Brothers, the Super Mario <laughs> Brothers game, and they just literally put the Bubble Bobble characters on top. Just like a but that's what game. original Bubble Bobble was. So, Is it? Yes. Now, let's move to Sega for Saturn. Sega Saturn. Frank's holding up here. The pristine case and foam <laughs> insert. Oh, my God. He's worth a fortune. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that. so I think one of you may be, or Huck, you may be right. Like, I think it was called something relating to Bubble Bobble at some point. It was point. called Puzzle Bobble originally. Okay. And then got changed to Bust a Move, so who knows. But... You know, I love Peggle. I, I actually re- remember really liking Bust a Move as well. So, and I love Zuma. I love those types of games. Yeah. So. Yep. I started playing <laughs> Zuma's version. I have some ideas brewing right now for my own version of one of these things. <laughs> okay, yeah. interesting. Okay, uh, anything else to say about the Taito stuff? No. I like seeing the, the name Taito again, Blast from the Past. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, I'll briefly mention a game that I... I think had honorable mention for my most anticipated, which in hindsight seems absolutely insane. Uh, Balan <laughs> Wonderworld, which I was intrigued by strictly because it's Yuji Naka and Sonic Team. I don't know if it is actually Sonic Team, but Yuji Naka is involved. And I always find Yuji Naka games intriguing, although usually not that great, like Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, Knights. Burning Rangers, the non-Sonic games, they always seem interesting, and I like the art style that they use, but I don't know. Something just is always off with these games. And when I saw the the footage of this, it's like they took all the worst parts of Knights and made it into a game. It's like walking around as the kids and doing like the lamest platforming ever, <laughs> and that's <laughs> this game. Like, why would you take... Like, Knights was not bad, except for the part that this game is. So, based on what I saw, I am so out on this, unless it's... Everyone's well, like, this is the best game. You have to play Battle in Wonderworld. Any excitement I had has dissipated completely. So, I haven't played Knights or any of the other games you mentioned, I don't think. But um, I tried the demo for this. There's a demo out right now. And I just randomly... I like. I was looking on a list of upcoming games because it's coming out at the end of this month. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I saw that there was a demo. And I saw that it was a co-op platformer game. I thought, oh, maybe something to play with the kids. And so we tried the demo. Oh, there we go. Nice. Nice. Sonic Sega Saturn. There's yeah. the Sonic Team logo right there. <laughs> and let's not be crazy. Let's don't not forget Burning Rangers. This thing is going for like 300 bucks on eBay. I have never heard of that game. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything it. about it. Heard of Knights, have not heard of Burning Rangers. But um, so we tried, we played a bit of this demo co op, and it was pretty rough, I gotta say. Like, there were some glitches going on. It's like it's a platformer, like a 3D platformer, kind of, you know, I feel like the genre, that genre has kind of gone away. Like, I mean, you've obviously got Mario Odyssey and stuff like that. You Um, know why it's gone away though? Like, to it's, get it just right from that like zoomed out camera angle is so difficult. Yeah. And 
I mean, Mario pulls it off somehow, but they, they, I think they sneakily make the camera go behind Mario to make the platforming easier on you when you're not touching the joystick. Whereas a lot of these older games, they just kind of let the camera go wherever and it makes it really difficult. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo just polishes the shit out of their games. Like they can pull it off, but you know, ukulele, I guess is a recent one that kind of <laughs> mixed reviews there. Um, super lucky's tail is okay. But, uh, so this one is, you know, you pick up costumes, the costumes give you different abilities, but it's like the costume will give you one ability. So like you can become a plant and like stretch your neck or you can be a dragon and shoot fireballs, but you can't jump when, while you're shooting fireballs. I don't think like it's, you can switch between the costumes, but it seems so limited. But the big thing I wanted to mention with this is it looked painful. Pain. In the co-op mode, they have this thing where if you get close to the other player, and it's not split screen, so it's sort of like player one, the camera follows them around, and player two just has to kind of find their way into the camera uh, viewport <laughs> if they can. Oh, Frank's showing off all his Sega Saturn <laughs> goodies. Um, but if you get close to the other player, it they like fuse together. Like, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like, um, you know, like in Mario or Yoshi games where you can disappear into the bubble temporarily and just let one person go through the level. And they had something like this for Unravel too, where you could combine the two players temporarily. So I guess it's supposed to help you out when you're playing co-op, but it just automatically sucks them together when you, as soon as you get close and you're like, get away. (laughs) Like, it's just so annoying. Uh, So I was, yeah we were struggling a bit and it's just such a weird, like so weird and quirky and and the weirdness I kind of like, but this thing is as disaster written all over it. I think it was $80 to pre-order when I looked into it. That too. (laughs) That Balan Wonder World game is $80. It's like a full retail game. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, apparently I did not. I'm looking at Yuji Naka's last few games. Um, he worked as a programmer on Legend of Coin in 2017. I mean, yeah, it's. His recent track record has not been good, but. Fantasy Star Online was a huge thing he did as well, so. All right, Balan Wonderland. We've talked way too much about that turd. Uh, <laughs> second to last announcement, <laughs> Life is Strange, which in the comments I saw seemed to be what people were the most excited about in the in the stream. The series has done pretty well. It started as episodic. They announced this new one is not episodic. It's a full game. Uh, I think the first one, which I've played most of, The Power is Rewinding being able to redo an event with prior knowledge and rewind time. This one seems to be about, I think it said you can visualize empathy or something or see uh, Sense colors of emotions, of emotions stuff yeah. like that. So I guess it's could be interesting to see how that plays out. I wasn't necessarily hooked more because I, w- I liked but didn't love the first uh, Life is Strange. I don't think I finished it. I was going for an easy platinum. Should probably go in and finish that one up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought it looked okay. I didn't really, I wasn't sold on the mechanic necessarily, but I guess they also announced that the first two are coming out in uh, remastered with improved animation and graphics before this new one in September. So I think it's, you get, if you pre-order or like it, it, you can get the full package of all three together. And I think you can only buy the first two standalone later. Something like that, they said. Hmm. But yeah, I've never played these games. I kind of feel like I should check them out at some point. Um, But, you know, watching trailers for this game, like it's a tough sell because it's not really about the gameplay. It's more about the story, I assume. And, you know, story doesn't look that amazing like I, I, did they even really show that much gameplay though it seemed like it was mostly just like cutscene stuff they showed from what yeah, and talking about the tag casting and stuff like that isn't yeah. that what the game is though isn't it just 
dialogue and I guess so. Puzzles, There's a lot of puzzles, kind of fast cuts and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's an it's a modern adventure game, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm surprised, Frank. I thought you were going to bring up like. Uh, I, the first thing that popped into my head. So there's a little bit of music seems to be a, like a, a factor in this game. The main character plays guitar. I thought for sure you were going to say they ripped off the guitar mechanic from the last of us part two or something. I didn't um, even notice it in the game. I just remember. I don't know if there is an actual mechanic. The main performer shredding on that broom. <laughs> <laughs> but they had the, like they played a bit of a song where the main character was just playing it on an acoustic guitar. Yeah. And I wonder I how much that. they played paid for that. It was Radiohead's Creep. Yeah. Oh so right. Yeah. Probably well, probably had some coin on that. <laughs> Definitely yeah. a song I'm sick of. So I think I might have looked away from the screen and not actually. <laughs> <laughs> I I played through the first one, and that was actually I believe made by Don't Nod, not by these Deck Nine guys that are making this one, but this Deck Nine team made Before the Storm, which was. I get. I thought it was like DLC, but I guess it was sort of like a yeah, standalone. Was, is that the one you played? Episode. Kid? No, that was something else. I think that was that was like Captain Underpants uh, or something, right? Ca- yeah, what was that <laughs> one called? Captain. Yeah. Something. something. Yeah, but I think that was Don't Nod too, and I think that was DLC. And then there was this Before the Storm, which is like Life is Strange two, I believe, but it was only three episodes, I believe, instead of five. I believe the original was five. And um, I never played that one. So it'll be interesting to see. But I actually thought the character models and the environments look really good. Obviously, they're running it on, you know, next-gen hardware or, you know, high, high-end PCs. Because the models look, look really good for the characters. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in it. I, I liked Life is Strange, but I, didn't, I don't know if I would play more. But I, I might give this one a go. Yeah, so apparently Don't Nod, originally I, re- I remember the game Remember Me was their first game for Capcom. Yeah. Uh, Life is Strange, Vampire. Uh, well, they did Vampire too? The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit was the oh, one we were struggling for. Life <laughs> yeah. is Strange 2. And two games I really didn't know about, Tell Me Why in 2020 and Twin Mirror. Never heard of Twin Mirror. They seem like they're the same type of narrative games, so. Yeah, tell me why is on Game Pass, right? I think. Uh, yeah, sure. It, it's an Xbox Game Studios published game, so I would assume it is. Mm. Yeah. All right, and the last thing, I'll be honest, the thing I was most intrigued by, by far, no surprise, I would think, uh, Project Athia, which I had forgotten about, mm-hmm. which got its name for Spoken, which is basically the type of game I love. It seems somewhat open world action game. Uh, locomotion looked very yeah, interesting, yeah. moving very quickly through the world, whether it's climbing or dashing uh, looked fantastic graphically lighting wise to me. Um, reminded me obviously of horizon, a bit of uh, bio mutant. So there's a lot of games that I think are, have been taken a while to come out that are trying to hit that, horizon feel to me and this is one of them it's slated to launch in 2022 and i was extremely excited by what i saw including the very brief but you know there was a lot of gameplay edited together in a very Mm -hmm. short montage and i thought it looked really good yeah it did and so when i saw that i was actually quite intrigued and i was like this looks this really reminds me of something and the first thing that popped in my head was actually the UE5. Knew that's what you were going to say. Yeah. And so I was like, are they using Unreal 5? And then I looked into it. And actually, this is a team that made Final Fantasy 15. It's like a spinoff of that team. So it, that Luminous Productions, they like took a group that made that game. And they're using the engine that was behind Final Fantasy 15. And that started with Final Fantasy 13 2, I believe. I think it said in the Wikipedia thing I was reading. So, and if you look at it again with that, the Final Fantasy 15 combat in mind, it looks very similar. A lot of the animations, like that spinning through the air stuff and like kind of the grabbing onto stuff kind of in the trees they were doing reminded me a lot of Final Fantasy 15 combat. Yeah, I I remember the brief 
uh, amount of Final Fantasy 15 I played, I found the grap like you can latch onto things and yeah. like, teleport up onto different things. I found that kind of clunky, to be honest, but even camera wise, it wasn't like just a control thing. Like the way it mm-hmm. looked didn't look that fluid. So I feel like they've kind of nailed it in what I've yeah. seen in this video. It's tough to tell uh, for, from what we saw, but it looked like a good action game where I would say the action yeah. and combat in Final Fantasy 15 was good, not great from what I remember. Yeah, I would agree with that. It definitely looked improved upon like the, it looked incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have too much to say. I thought it looked cool. I'm I, There's a lot of these kind of original IP games that I'm getting mixed up in my head right now. Like, it's hard to keep some of them straight. Um, but, I mean, it, it looked very nice, I thought. Now, there was... I thought this game, and I'm just seeing something here, like, it was originally supposed to be, like, partially procedurally generated or something. I don't... I didn't really see anything about that today, but... Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's still a part of it or what. Another game that it does, this doesn't remind me of, but it reminded me of it in the same, like I said, Bio Mutant and uh, what was the other one I said? Horizon. That we never talked about. Uh, Black Myth. The trailer for that dropped pretty recently. Did you guys see that? No, I don't think so. Black Myth Wukong. No. Oh, it looks really good. It's like a next gen third person action RPG. Hmm. It's definitely worth taking a peek at. Apparently oh, the cool. trailer dropped a month ago. Yeah. And like the one screenshot also looks like that UE five demo where they're outside in this kind of oh, yeah. ruins, the lighting and effects in that game look insane. Yeah. I remember it's, Someone posted it on Instagram, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I am. Apparently, it's a Souls-like game. Oh yeah, it looks good. <laughs> it looks real good. Hmm. So, some new IPs coming that there's are a lot of stuff right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I am pumped. Whoa, <laughs> sorry, I was just watching this. There's like uh, the section where he's going into like a almost like a little shrine or something. And then all of a sudden all these lights light up and you can actually like see the light propagate out as the lights light up. Like that's really some next gen lighting shit. That's cool. Yeah. Black myth looks, we've never talked about before. (laughs) The effects are insane. I'm watching like just a gif and I'm losing it. My needle is moving all over. (laughs) (laughs) It looks so good. Uh, anyway, we never really talked about that. So I'm glad we had an excuse to bring it up. So yeah. they said they're going to do another, uh, square Enix thing in the summer. I'm assuming focusing on final fantasy stuff and the remake additions with, even though they announced the Yuffie stuff, I think they'll re- remind us about it when it comes out in June potentially and talk about maybe final fantasy 16, which we got a glimpse of previously and looks really good. Um, but let's move on to the PlayStation VR two controllers, which were unveiled today. And sorry, (laughs) they were also (laughs) unveiled. (laughs) (laughs) It's just how I say that word. You're going to have to deal with it. It's just weird for me. I'm the one who always pronounces things weird. It's like, like, it's like a combination (laughs) of unveiled and revealed. It's the way I say I used to say prevalent instead of prevalent <laughs> because of valence electrons in <laughs> science class. Uh, anyway, unveiled. Is that how I'm supposed to say it? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You got it. <laughs> that's how regular people say that word. Uh, not surprisingly, everyone's saying they look a lot like Oculus controllers, which mm-hmm. I agree with. And I... Everyone accuses me of being a Sony fanboy and apologist, but I've been on the record forever saying that Sony is just really good at ripping off other stuff. I said it about Uncharted. They took a basic Gears of War and Tomb Raider and ripped it off into a perfect game. Resistance ripped off 
Halo and made it more interesting. Trophies ripped off achievements. Like, I, w I don't think Sony has the greatest track record for ingenuity, but they tend to improve these things or make a great version of it. And I think they've, a lot of their new IPs have basically built on the work of other games. I've never denied that, but uh, they end up making the best versions of those games. So we can have a whole nother debate that we kind of started with uh, Maquette about, you know, who gets the credit for these genres and ideas. And I will admit Sony rips things off 100%. And they ripped off these controllers. I'm kind of shocked because I prefer the move controllers to the Oculus ones, probably because it's how I started to play VR. So I'm not that excited by these new controllers other than I guess the thing to take out of this is uh, doesn't seem like there's lights or anything on it. So it'll all be internal sensors, which have or has people speculating that there's no camera to use PSVR, which seems kind of inevitable as I would have thought. Uh, anything else to uh, take away from this, gentlemen? I would say well, that's the big thing. Yeah, I mean, just that it's integrating elements of the dual sense, right? Like the haptic feedback. Oh, right. That's a good, good point, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, Which could have big, bigger implications in, v in VR, I think. Yeah, for sure. And like it, it I, I assume Oculus has this, but it's just that it has the finger detection so that you can actually sense finger movement. Um, mm -hmm. which, I mean, the PlayStation Move, I, I think, you know, it's fine, but it, it kind of was never intended for use for VR. So it's kind of a pretty outdated peripheral at this point. So it's, it's nice that they're updating it. I mean, the thing that I'm just excited about, I mean, you know, it was only a couple of weeks ago that they announced that they are d doing a next-gen VR system now they've revealed the controllers like outright like this is done this is what it's going to look like i mean this thing can't be that far off can it i wouldn't think so unless they're going to save it for holiday yeah i mean it probably is what they're aiming for but i mean i'm hoping you know summer e3 time they, they will actually unveil the system I haven't heard a lot of news lately about PlayStation 5 numbers and stock, but I feel like Sony has really dropped the ball. If they had enough stock of this system, I, I think they would be dominating. <laughs> I, there's a lot of demand, and I do not hear like, oh, PS5s are back on sale again. It's almost like they really have a huge uh, shortage on these consoles, and... I would assume they have to hold off until the install base is at a certain level. Like it just doesn't make sense. I don't think you would think their manufacturing efforts would be going towards consoles, not this. And they did really just, strange. Uh, they did just restock at Walmart today. They apparently um, had a bunch, but they sold out again pretty quick. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's still, I don't know when they're going to get to a point where it's like literally anyone who wants one can just go to a store and buy one. Uh, seems like we're still a ways away from that, but they've got to be like really frustrated. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad, but um, I mean, I don't know. I like, it, there's a lot of stuff being announced right now. Um, it kind of felt like first couple months of this year, things were a little slow. Um, but I don't know, stuff's really picking up now. And like all the stuff that was announced for Game Pass for, you know, the next month or so. Um, Sony just announced a bunch of indie games. They announced a bunch of stuff coming for the current PSVR. Um, I expect you to die too. I'm excited for that. So there's a lot of stuff coming out this year. Yeah, it's start, like you said, it's starting to pick up. And they did just real quick to mention the, the play at home thing bunch of free games four of which are psvr games so i think they are trying to get people to sort of move towards vr they're giving them a little push in that direction but i i don't know i'm wondering if we're going to see a big price drop on the uh original psvr soon could be i don't know if they're still hard to find i know at the beginning of the pandemic they were there was a yeah. 
a high demand and short supply. I don't know if that's changed. Hmm. Okay, I think that's all for news. Unless, Huck, there was, there was something you wanted to touch on? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk a bit. So this week is traditionally the Game Developers Conference. So obviously they're not having that in San Francisco this year. They're doing an online thing. So I don't know if anyone was open to it, but I was able to sign up and uh, get into the like online presentations. And you kind of just pick what you want to watch and it's all available through this special website to watch. So um, today I watched a NVIDIA presentation that really was focusing on their next gen, or I guess kind of current gen right now, you know, RTX, which is like the ray tracing stuff. And it was really, really impressive. Now I know like some games are doing it or doing some of it like control and uh, battlefield and stuff or doing some of the stuff, call of duty. And I'm just really excited for it. After watching this presentation, they were talking about all the optimizations they've been able to do with their, uh, global illumination and their, their, they called it direct lighting, which allows you to basically get unlimited amount of lights in a scene for essentially free, which is really incredible, uh, especially ray traced. You can do that right now, essentially with deferred rendering, which is a different rendering type, but with ray tracing, like that's really cool. Um, and then they had all this other stuff, which I'm just kind of learning about now, this thing called DLSS, which I've been seeing pop up here and there. It stands for deep learning super sampling. And it's a really cool technology that essentially uses machine learning, deep learning to basically take a low res image of a, of a scene. So you only cast, you know, maybe a quarter of the rays that you would normally need to make a 4k image or maybe even less. And then through all this deep learning and using like, you know, the previous scene and, you know, kind of making guesses, it, it upsamples everything and makes sure that it comes out like a super sampled 4k image with using less uh, ray cast. And it looked incredible from what I could tell. And it made things run extremely fast because now instead of ray tracing, you know, I don't know, whatever that is, a lot of rays, because usually you shoot out a ton, you're, you're shooting out a lot less and you're getting essentially the same quality. And they even showed some examples where you actually gain finer detail. They showed this image where there was, it was from Fortnite and there was a guy kind of parachuting in and off in the distance, there was a a cabin on a lake that had sort of like a a high dock or deck coming out. And in the non DLSS version, underneath the shadow was just kind of fuzzy like it just kind of looked like a sh- soft shadow, but in the, the the DLSS version turned on, you could actually see the light coming through the little slats of the deck from way back when they zoomed in. Like it was really incredible the amount of detail it was able to add and with like better performance. It just seemed crazy to me. And, you know, all this ray tracing stuff is really exciting. A lot, like I know a lot of the games are doing it for uh, shadows and, um, reflections right now and that's really cool that's the one thing i don't know if you guys remember this but there's always that case where like you have a tree in the distance that has a light behind it that should be casting a shadow towards the camera but because the tree is off camera slightly the shadow doesn't cast because uh using traditional you know rasterization techniques it just doesn't look at that because it's off screen it just calls it out and won't do any of the shadow cast so you get this like shadow pop or this reflection pop in as you're playing the game but with ray casting it'll take all that into account because it ray casts across the entire scene and that's really exciting that's really next gen as far as you don't see that anymore you won't see that pop and i'm really excited for that going forward and and you know if they can even take it further where now you're doing the whole scene rendered i mean that's really exciting stuff going forward and um in this presentation, they were saying it's only for custom C++ engines or Unreal Engine, no mention of Unity yet. So obviously they cannot get it running in Unity, which is really a detriment to Unity's sort of like next gen plans for their engine. Um, I still really like the Unity engine, but you know that is a strong case for Unreal Engine, especially with some of the other um, acquisitions Unreal's been making 
lately they've been making a lot of acquisitions in terms of getting content and content providers and tools to make better content. Whereas Unity seems to be going to the path of trying to improve the process for non-game industries like AR stuff, uh, VR stuff, but for like architecture firms and stuff like that. They're doing a lot of this like architectural visual visualization space. And that's, you know, that's cool, but that is not cutting edge ray tracing stuff. I know in the latest uh, version of Unity, they do have the ray tracing stuff, but obviously it's not using this, you know, NVIDIA, NVIDIA cutting edge stuff, which is going to going to put them, you know, kind of behind on the race to be the best engine in the space. So anyways, I just wanted to touch on that. I found it really cool. Thought I'd geek out for a bit. Guys geek and relax, but <laughs> a needle away. Yeah. Oh, it's through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Huck. Uh, let's get on to, I didn't see it, so I really can't comment on it. It sounds interesting. Um, let's get on to what we played. Sean, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, well, so I, I finished Maquette. You know, it was okay. Like I, I liked the puzzles and stuff. Story, I'm still a little bit. I, I appreciate the attempt to sort of tell this personal story in this way, but, you know, didn't totally love it. Um, but it kind of got me in the mood for another first-person puzzle game. And for whatever reason, I just went through my back catalog of stuff and started playing the Talos Principle again, which I had played before, never finished. And this has got to be one of my favorite puzzle games. Like it's, it's amazing. Like I, I, it's, you know, it seems like it was kind of inspired by portal uh, and it doesn't quite have the same uh, like, I don't like it quite as much as portal, but um, the way it just kind of builds on, you know, it starts off with, um, you know, you just have these things called jammers, which you can pick up in place to open doors or you can put them on like there's, sort of these enemies that will patrol a level and you can use a jammer to stop them in their tracks so you can sneak by them. And then, you know, they start adding these connectors, which you have to like connect power sources to open doors. And then there's blocks, there's fans, like they keep adding new items and things in the puzzles and it just builds really well. And there's kind of this story that i'm starting to get a sense of what it is i think it has something to do with ai sort of like this realm between ai and religion seems to be kind of what it's playing with but um i i love the atmosphere it's it's a beautiful looking game i mean i'm playing playing on the ps5 but it's you know it's a ps4 game i think it's the definitive edition of that one i, I don't remember i think i got you gotta be pish on. There's a P. There's a not a PS, but a, a VR version for. I I saw that and I was I was that kind of was I think what originally reminded me of this game. Um, it's not coming to PSVR though, as far as I can tell. So it's. No. it's a Steam that, that would be a cool way Rift to play. Survive exclusive. So. I'm wondering there was there was a Mist VR that came out I think last year. Again, only on PC. But that one supposedly was going to come to PlayStation VR, and I, I think it's on seen. Quest as well. Like the is it? Yeah. And so I'm kind of would be curious to try that. I know that Abduction game, which is from the makers of Mist, did come to PSVR, but kind of didn't get great reviews for the VR version. So uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm in that zone right now where I'm just loving sort of puzzle games where you just kind of it's kind of got a relaxing vibe to it, you know, nothing stressful. You can just take your time, explore the each level and figure it out. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it. Cool. I am playing Undertale, which uh -oh. we were kind of chatting about. And I had started it three or four years ago on PlayStation and got about halfway through it and then abandoned it for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I'm like, well, it's on Game Pass. It just came to Game Pass. I'll play through up until where I was and then switch back over to PlayStation. I might as well get some achievements <laughs> if I have to replay that first half anyway. So now I'll move to PlayStation, cap off that Platinum, and uh, maybe finish it on Xbox. We'll see. But I am liking it. I, I liked it the first time I played it. I think it's pretty funny. And 
it's like kind of this meta game RPG. And I know people love it. I really like it. I don't know if I love it, but I do like the basic mini games for combat. I'm less interested in the, um, what is it? There's neutral genocide and pacifist. I, the pacifist idea is intriguing to me, but it's just not that much fun to do. So I'm pure genocide. Uh, <laughs> just cause I think the mini games are more fun. I, it's more fun to me. Although I like the idea of the pacifist playthrough. I doubt I'll ever do it unless the ending is really interesting, which I've heard it is. I, so, I'm uh, interested how the ending plays on console. Cause on uh, PC, it was, it was very convincing, like what they do and like okay. what happens. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what, how they handle it on console. Hmm. Well, now I'm even more intrigued that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> To see how this game plays out. I didn't know there was kind of a, sounds like a meta ending, maybe a <laughs> sanity system type thing going on on PC. The breaking the fourth wall, which now you've spoiled it for me. Thank you. I'm already <laughs> running and I'm thinking about what it's going to be in a way oh, that it wow. wasn't before. Now oh, you well. can hype it up. <laughs> I will finish it this time. I promise. I make a solemn vow to finish Andre. <laughs> I want to play this too because I haven't played it yet and uh, this might be my excuse to finally get to it. But I mean, if you're playing it already, I guess I should do that. Right, Frank? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, Sean. Right <laughs> behind Resident Evil 2, 3, 7. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> what do you think of the battle system with uh, the, like kind of mini games built I in love and it. everything? Yeah, it's really neat. The only Just... thing that brought that game down for me was really I found some of the you know, just walking around kind of slow paced, a lot of kind music's of music's like really good though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that guy, Toby Fox, like did everything, like all the music, everything. Pretty incredible. Just so you know, Frank, I played half an hour of Dishonored. So sometimes I follow through on these things. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, I can go next. I played the original Doom. I got, you know, I felt followed through with my itch to play it. I played the, I didn't play much. I only played the first two areas, two scenes or whatever you call them. And man, I forgot how just this game is just so good. It's amazing. It still holds up, I would say. And just the movement of the camera, just that subtle Bob, um, how, like how simple the controls are really is nice like literally it's just like forward back shoot and i guess switch your weapons but it's so straightforward uh all the enemies are so readable from any distance the sound effect is so memorable and so like immersive how every, every i don't know every sound is just so memorable in this game and I, i'm liking the level design even right away you know you get that first level and you think you found everything and then you get that like 10% secrets found and you're like, what the hell? Like this level is tiny. Where the hell is, you know, 10 more secrets that I need to find. And it just kind of gets your mind thinking like, Oh, should I go back and try to find all these things and like press space bar on every single wall I see like I used to do. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sounds <about> right. <laughs> and then I just go on to the next uh, level and forget about that. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I forgot how good this game was. It really holds up like no wonder, uh, this game is so well received and so coveted by everybody. It's been ported to like every yeah. system imaginable. Yeah. And probably will be ported to every system going forward forever. <laughs> yeah. Did you rewatch the uh, Tim Rogers three and a half hour doom review? No, but I should You're actually. <laughs> I should excellent. also reread masters of doom and watch every Carmack and John Romero thing I could find. There you go. Actually, yep. that reminds me, they, um, Doom 3 is coming to VR at the end of this month, too, they announced. Hmm. Big That'll be terrifying. <laughs> Sean, you got anything else? No, that's it. It was just your second thing was Dishonored? Well, it was kind of the demo of um, oh, uh, Wonder Alan World. But... Wonder World, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Check us out on youtube.com forward slash game junk. Uh, on Twitter, film junk for Sean, equilibrium sis 
and My Angry Commute for Andrew. Anything else? Uh, game YouTube.com slash Game Junk. Did you say that? I did. Oh, okay. I always said it again. Subscribe. Smash, smash like, it. Smash, smash like. it. <laughs> do what you got to do. Comment. Share. <laughs> anyway. Let's see if we could break a thousand views on this we, we got to 500 subscribers so you know keep it coming huge we're getting there anyway thanks for checking it out thanks for supporting and we'll talk to you soon bye-bye